So this talk is going to be about uh, an interesting example where we use a factorization method to solve a first order second degree differential equation. Then we find there are a number of solutions that are partly stationary and we have an interesting way of trying to combine various types of solutions. Let's just get into it. So here's the differential equation. Uh, x is the independent variable, y is the dependent variable. Okay, and here's the equation y prime squared plus y squared is 1. What's, uh, what's an interesting solution to this? Uh, sin x. Sin x. You could also take cosine x if you wanted, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so those are solutions and that's, that's the kind of thing we want. But let's actually solve it. So we factor it. Well, we want to, you can bring the minus, rewrite this as y prime squared plus y squared minus 1 equals 0. Then you factor it. In fact, you have to use radicals. So y prime minus squared upon minus y squared and y prime plus squared upon minus y squared is 0. So you're basically going to solve either this is 0 or this is 0. So what are the stationary solutions for this? Just this one. What are the stationary solutions? 1. And negative one. one and negative one. What about the other the stationary solution for this? Negative one. Oh, one. Also one and negative one. So both of these have these two stationary solutions. So overall, also you have these two stationary solutions. Now let's try to see what the general solution is for each one. So for this one, you have dy dx is square root one minus y square. For this one, you have dy dx is negative square root one minus y square. What does this solve to? Uh, you bring this down and integrate. What yeah. do you get? Arc uh, sine y is x plus c1. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have these two solution families. Now, what, what's actually happening in these solution families? Well, if you just look at this solution family, this would be valid only only within a certain interval, right? Mm -hmm. Minus c1 minus pi over 2 to minus c1 plus pi over 2. There's actually a separate video where we do we do just this differential equation. Though we use different notation, we do we call this x and this t. But essentially we just solve this one and we see that that essentially this solution. Uh, yeah, just at this differential equation. You obviously have the stationary solutions, but in addition to those, you have solutions which rise like that, but they cannot fall back down anymore. The reason they cannot fall back is because once they reach once they reach the top thing, they, they cannot go down because the dead weight is always positive or zero, right? Mm -hmm. So then they have to actually stay constant here. Stay constant. That, that's the solution just to this one. And what do you expect the solution to the other one to be? Well, let me sort of the reverse situation, right? You can you start like that, go down, and then stay here. Okay. So the family of solutions, the first one is just these kinds of curves, right? Mm -hmm. Start at negative one, then rise sinusoid little one and stay at one. And the family of this other one is just these kinds of curves. Start at one, then go sinusoidally down to minus one and then stay at minus one. But now, so, so that's what you would get if you were just trying to find solutions to these individually. But what I want to do now is find what? Combined solutions. So combined solution, what can I do? Well, what I could do is I could sort of do this, be in this branch, then once I reach one, I could switch to the other branch. And then, so what could I do? Let's say let's say I'm starting off here at minus one. I decide to, to do a sinusoidal thing and get to plus one. Now what choices do I have here? Hmm? What? Well I could I could either decide to switch to the other branch, right? Okay. If I decide to switch to the other branch, I would start going down sinusoidally. Right? Yeah. But I could also choose to what? Go constant. Go constant. But I. But even if I choose to go constant, I don't have to stay constant forever, right? Mm -hmm. I could decide to go down sometime later. 
then again I could decide to go up immediately or I could decide to stay constant and when I decide to stay constant I could stay constant forever but I could also decide at any time later to change my mind and then start going up. Now you have infinite solutions. Well not just inf infinite solutions but you have like it's much worse than that right you have like you have infinitely many choices each time you reach minus one or one, mm -hmm. right? You have infinitely many choices of whether to when to rise again. So you have like infinite times infinite times infinite solutions, right? So so one type of solution is just the one nowhere stationary solutions. Mm -hmm. What would the nowhere stationary solutions look like? Solutions which never stay constant. Oh, just look at sine x. Sine of x plus c. Uh -huh. So, nowhere stationary solutions is just a nice well behaved family. Okay, but if you allow the solution to be partly stationary, you could get lots of solutions, right? So, you could have a, a solution that you just you could have a solution that started off like that, went up, stayed like that, then went down, then went up and down regularly for a while, stayed down. Like, so you could do anything, right, essentially. Do lots of things. So there are just too many partly stationary solutions. hard to even write down explicitly what the family is because there's infinitely many parameters you have to fix. Okay, 